Hello everyone, my name is Anitsu and I'm back with another Digimon deck profile video. So today I'm going to be taking a look at uh, EX4 and EX4 offers us lots of new and powerful tools to be able to build and iterate on some new and existing decks. And today's deck I'm going to be taking a look at is going to be a brand new iteration on the Beal Starmon deck. So Beal Starmon is a really interesting uh, card to play around with uh, because there's a lot of different ways we could approach deck building based on the different color splashes we want because as long as they keep printing new seven costed options for her to play around with, she's always going to be a card uh, worth looking at uh, to see what we could possibly do with those new tools and the new tools that EX4 offers us is no different. It gives us a new yellow seven costed option for us to play around with that's actually pretty good, but I still think the blue uh, splash is still a little bit better, especially in this meta, to be able to tech against specific matchups uh, against some of the more powerful decks in the meta. But we still have some decent tools that we could use trying to be a very low to the ground aggressive style of deck to fill up our trash as quickly as we possibly can to make it Beal Starmon as uh, efficient as we can possibly make her. So that way we could uh, put ourselves in that position to be able to toolbox the different options we have access to. So with all that said and done, let's just dive right into the deck profile. Starting off with the Digitama, I am going to be running five Digitamas. You don't have to run five if you don't want to, and the Digitamas uh, are kind of interchangeable between the two that you're using, depending on uh, your approach to the deck. Because I am running an off-color Tamer, I don't have a way to revive that Tamer once it's in the trash, so I don't want to hardcore Turbo Mill, and I do think having some decent uh, draw and discard allows us to try to dig out our Tamer better, so that way we could at least see it to be able Able to use our off-color options. So Demi Marimon is going to be my preferred egg at doing that, just because it's on deletability allows us to draw and discard, filtering through our deck and setting up our trash for however we want it. And then the fifth Digitama of the deck is going to be one copy of Pagumon, just for that turbo mill potential, just because it's filling up our trash a little bit faster than Demi Marimon for having that same condition. Next, on to the rookies, I'm going to be running uh, one copy of Giyomon. So this is the EX4 version of Giyomon, and this is a fantastic card uh, for some good aggression, just because uh, we're trying to utilize its on playability more than trying to actually digivolve into this card. So its on playability rewards us uh, for not only having a decently large trash, but also trying to control and fill up the opponent's trash as well at making this card a really good cheap rusher. Next, I'm going to be running uh, four copies of Impmon. So I am going to be playing a lot with uh, the Imp stuff, uh, just because uh, we do have some good Impmon-based synergies to be playing around with. And uh, the BT2 Impmon is really good at also trying to help uh, Turbo Trash our deck, Next, I'm going to be running one copy of Impmon. So this is the BT6 version of Impmon, and this is just for recyclability on our Beal Starmon. Next, I'm going to be running four copies of Impmon X Antibody. So Impmon X Antibody is doing something very similar to what we just saw with uh, the BT6 Impmon, where the main goal and intention of this card is just to try to recycle our evils, wizards, or demon lords, which Beal Starmon is a wizard, so she's a card that we could try to grab back utilizing Impmon X Antibody. Then on top of that, it also has a pretty decent uh, inheritable ability for when we're digivolving into uh, our level 4 Digimon by allowing us to have even more ability to trash our deck so we could try to fill up our trash as quickly as we possibly can. Next, I'm going to be running uh, one copy of Itmon. So this is the EX2 Itmon, and unfortunately this card is limited to one, which is why I'm not really wanting to try to hardcore turbo mill, just because uh, we can't turbo mill as efficiently as we used to. So uh, the fact that uh, this is still just a really good card when it's milled at milling an additional three makes it still very desirable on top of it being an Itmon, but uh, the on play ability isn't necessarily doing a whole lot because we're not really running any Beelzemons or I and Makos, so this is just a card we're hoping to see out of pure RNG or use as just a dummy card in our raising area if we do see it in our hand. 
And then the last uh, rookie of the deck is going to be four copies of Itmon. So this is the promo Itmon, and this card is actually really good at being able to not only just help us uh, see our rookies more often, because when the opponent checks it in security, it's going to be adding itself into our hand as part of its security effect, but the other part of the security effect uh, allows us to even uh, try to maintain a board presence as best as we possibly can by allowing us to play our level 3 purple Digimon from our trash. Next, on to the level 4s, I'm going to be running uh, one copy of Ginkakuman Promote. So, Ginkakuman Promote is another rusher for this deck to use. This card's really good because it just naturally has rush, so it combos really nicely with one of our options to be able to revive it back, to be able to apply some really good uh, pressure against the opponent and get some swings out of nowhere. We're not trying to utilize its on playability at all, but the other way that we actually do want to try utilizing this card is by digivolving it on top of a card we just played for free off of another card if this is stuck in our hand, so that way we could still try to get some really good aggression against the opponent. Next, I'm going to be running four copies of Eismon Scatter Mode. So Eismon Scatter Mode is doing something very similar to Demi Merimon, where we do want that draw and discard, and this is just the best card at drawing us the most and discarding a decent amount with a draw three and discard two. So that way we could try to, again, filter through our deck as best as we possibly can, finding the specific parts and pieces that we want, like our Blue Tamer, so we could set him up and to try to fill up our trash with the cards that we want in our trash more selectively. Next, I'm going to be running one copy of Eismon. So Eismon is another card that was so powerful it was limited to one, just because if we're discarding this card, especially off of uh, the discard of our Eismon scatter mode when it gets deleted, then he's going to be able to play himself for free. So having free value is always good, and he's even more powerful for us having lots of Eismon scatter modes in our trash, making him another really aggressive level 4 Digimon for us to use. Next, I'm going to be running... Uh, two copies of Doberman. So Doberman is basically the mill version of what Eismon Scatter Mode is doing, so we don't want to hardcore turbo mill because we are still trying to find some specific parts and pieces, but we still do want to try to uh, set up our trash as quickly and efficiently as we possibly can, and this card is just accomplishing that while also having the ability to add back purple Digimon or a purple Tamer from our trash into our hand so we could have some decent recycling in the deck as well. And then the last champion of the deck is going to be one copy of Porcupamon. So this is another tech or flex spot for the deck, and this could be really any blocker you feel like you want on the level 4 slot, just to try to help round things out, and to be able to have some good defensive plays as a really good card to want to revive. Porcupamon just has a little bit of an upside, not having attacks, being able to make him attack, on top of the fact that if we are just stuck, we could still try to hard play him to try to trash uh, our deck to set up our trash as best as we possibly can, for our Beale Star Mons. And speaking of our Beale Star Mons, next I'm going to be running uh, four copies of the BT6 Beale Star Mon. So uh, this card becomes cheaper for every three Musketeer and seven costed option in our trash, which is why we want to try to fill up our trash as quickly as we can, so that way uh, we could try to make her as cheap and efficient to play as best as we can. And the reward for utilizing her is her on playability, to be able to uh, grab back a 7 cost option from our trash, add it to our hand, and use an option that costs 7 or less from our hand for free, so we could really toolbox what option we need when we need it, based on what's in our trash and in our hand. And we do need it to abide by color restrictions, which is why we have to run an off-color tamer if you're using anything but the 3 musketeer options and purple options. And then the uh, last uh, level 6 of the deck is going to be one copy of the starter deck Beale Starmon. So the starter deck Beale Starmon is more of a really good late game card, just because uh, she's allowing us to be able to efficiently play our Impmons uh, when we're milling cards from our trash, and the Impmons that we're going to be playing are also going to gain the rush ability, so that way we could try to uh, be as aggressive with the level 3s that we're reviving off of her ability. Then she's also helped helping us uh, set up a trash and fill it up when the opponent is going to be attacking with their Digimon, and she even has an ability, like the other Beale Starmon, to be able to reduce the cost of her, 
And then when it comes to the level sevens, uh, you could run a slew of different level sevens just because purple has some really good level sevens we can incorporate. But I really do think based on how this deck wants to play that Shine Greymon Ruin Mode is going to be one of the better ones for us to use just because our Beale Starmon is going to be sitting on the field and we could Digivolve it into Ruin Mode to try to disrupt the opponent with its uh, when Digivolving and on Delete ability to be able to nuke the opponent's field uh, by 5,000 DP, which if you are able to uh, Digivolve and delete him in the same turn, that's a minus 10,000 debuff uh, towards the opponent's field, which is really, really powerful at stopping what they could potentially want to do. Then he even has an ability built in to be able to delete himself after he attacks. And uh, when we do, we get to uh, hatch an egg from our raising area and recover one, which just allows us to be able to reload and set up while have some recovery to try to put more threatening options into our security. And then when it comes to the Tamers, I'm only going to be running two copies of Kyoshiro. So Kyoshiro is going to be the blue Tamer to allow us to use blue options. He's a really good blue Tamer generically because he's going to be a really good memory fixing Tamer on top of the fact that he interacts with any level five or higher Digimon to allow us to draw a card if we have fewer than seven cards in our hand, acting as another really good draw engine for the deck. And then the blue options that we're going to incorporate is going to be one copy of Howling Crusher to try to get rid of uh, Digimon that have uh, problematic inheritable abilities and giant stacks we can't really deal with otherwise. And the other blue option we're going to be running is going to be two copies of Kakaitis Breath as the blue removal because uh, some cards do have uh, protection against deletion, but some might not have protection against bouncing. So having the different forms of removal just helps us uh, be able to toolbox of what we need when we need it. Next, I'm going to be running four copies of Fly Bullet. So Fly Bullet is just a really good generic removal option for us to use to delete the opponent's level six or lower Digimon. I'm going to be running uh, one copy of Calling from the Darkness because this is another card in purple that was so powerful that it's limited to one at being able to not only delete the Digimon we want ourselves, but be able to return it to a uh, purple Digimon from our trash back into our hand, which all of our Digimon in the deck are part purple. So we could grab anything we want and need out of our trash. And the crazy thing about this card is we don't actually need to delete anything if we don't have anything to delete on our field to be able to grab back the cards that we want and need. Next, I'm going to be running two copies of Mist Memory Boost. So Mist Memory Boost is a card more so to interact and synergize with uh, the uh, starter deck Beale Starmon because uh, we do need to try to figure out ways to mill on our turn to be able to make her effect uh, as uh, powerful as we can possibly make it. And Mist Memory Boost is one of the better ways that we have to be able to uh, mill cards out of our deck during our turn. And on top of that, the delay ability to gain two memory just means that we could set that up to make more powerful follow-up plays later. Next, I'm going to be running uh, three copies of Nailbone. So Nailbone is going to be one of the best options for us to use just because it's allowing us to revive a level three and a level four Digimon out of our trash for free. Unfortunately, we won't get any on play effects, uh, but that's okay just because spawning those two bodies can still lead to some very powerful plays depending on what we're able to spawn and how we're able to use them. And then the last option of the deck is going to be four copies of Rivals Barrage as yet again another really good removal card uh, on top of the fact that it does have the ability when it is milled to be able to uh, put it into the field to use its delay ability as more recyclability for our cards so we could keep trying to utilize our Beale Star Mons over and over again when we get to that stage of the game. On top of all of our options being relatively decent security threats in their own rights. And then when it comes to the overall game plan and gameplay of the deck, it isn't necessarily the most straightforward deck because a lot of it is just what you're able to see and uh, how you can time your cards to make them as effective as you possibly can. So the deck is, as I mentioned, centered around uh, the BT6 BL Starmon, utilizing a lot of our different seven costed options to try to disrupt the opponent as best as we possibly can. And our low end is best trying to set that up and support her as quickly 
and efficiently as we can make them. So when it comes to the usage of our level threes, the ones we're going to prioritize at most of the time is going to be our Itmons. So the best one to use in our raising area is going to be BT2, just because his on delete ability pairs up with the on delete abilities of our possible eggs to uh, try to help fill up our trash as quickly as we possibly can. The second best one that we're going to want to use in the raising area is actually going to be the EX2 one, just because this card does almost nothing for the deck outside of the fact that if we're lucky enough to see him as a mill trigger, then he could help us mill more to try to fill up our trash as quickly as we possibly can. Then uh, Impmon X Antibody does come in handy, especially to Digivolve on top of our uh, bad Impmons when we're using them in the raising area, just because the other Impmons really in the raising area aren't doing much of anything, and we're running them more so for their tech availability to do other things. But the fact that uh, Impmon X Antibody is also able to recycle our Beale Starmons make it still a very appealing card for us to use. So uh, when it comes to the usage of our rookies, that's kind of the majority of it. It, and uh, the outlier being Gilmon is in here just for some good late game rushes when uh, the trash is nice and full for both you and the opponent and because he's part purple we have ways to be able to grab him back so that way we have uh, constant cheap access at a good rusher to try to put as much pressure on the opponent as we possibly can. And then when it comes to the level 4s, the level 4s are really simple, even though a lot of them are super techy. So the important level 4s we're actually going to be digivolving into uh, 9 out of 10 times to try to be aggressive with is going to be Icemon Scatter Mode, again for that draw and discard, and we do want to try to draw and discard, especially in the early stages of our game, so that way we could try to find our Kyoshiro, so that way it doesn't necessarily matter if and how we turbo mill, we just want to try to find Kyoshiro first before we start putting the pedal to the metal so that way we can actually set him up because we don't have a way to revive that blue tamer to be able to utilize our blue options. But Doberman is just the card to put the pedal to the metal on top of having some good recyclability for our purple Digimon being another way for us to try to turbo mill. Then, when it comes to a lot of our tech level 4s, Porcupamon is just the blocker. You could run the Devimon blocker just because that one's cheap as well, but this one, in case we're stuck, at least is going to help try to fill up our trash, and we still have uh, ways to be able to uh, digivolve either of our level 4s into uh, Ginkakumon Promote as just an alternative way to be able to gain extra value out of our level 4s that really aren't doing a whole lot of anything, while Promote being another really good card like Porcupamon to possibly revive off of our nail bone. So the usage of our level 4s isn't anything too complicated, and we're mostly just trying to utilize uh, these aggressive low-end cards to fill up our trash as quickly as we possibly can, because if you noticed, we're not playing any level 5s, because both of our level 6s have a cost reduction abilities to try to make them as cheap as we can possibly make them, depending on uh, what we trash and how much we trash. I think that uh, the later the game goes, uh, the better the starter deck Beale Starmon is, just because uh, this is a card that does require other cards in order to be as effective, but the fact that it, with the proper setup, we could still make some very powerful uh, turns uh, utilizing this card could still help close out games, but the one we're going to be utilizing the most, obviously, is going to be uh, the... Uh, BT6 one, just because of the slew of different toolbox options that we could play to try to disrupt the opponent as best as we possibly can, and we are playing enough recyclability to be able to make sure we could use and reuse Beale Starmon over and over again. Shine Greymon Ruin Mode is in here just because he's a good level 7 that we also could recycle. That's also trying to disrupt the opponent, help fill up our trash, and put the Bielstermons back into the trash so we could grab them out later, and uh, just be a really good way for us to actually have access at recovery to try to put more threatening options in because the deck doesn't really have good access at recovery, which is one of the deck's big weaknesses is the fact that once our security is gone, we're not really super threatening anymore. And uh, the fact that we do just have a slew of really powerful options uh, to trigger in our security just make it really, really threatening in the earlier stages of the game because uh, the opponent is going to have to be very cautious on how they're going to want to aggress to try to uh, end up winning the game through what could be a very powerful security.
There's not necessarily a core or foundation for you to be playing around with it because it, you're going to be customizing the deck based on uh, the types of uh, packages you're going to want to play. I think the most popular ones are going to be uh, the blue splash, the yellow splash, or just a pure purple version of the deck that's trying to be a little bit more aggressive. But in terms of uh, some of the cards that you're going to think about uh, for utilizing the yellow splash and a lot of the cards and synergies we could line up utilizing yellow is going to be uh, TK is probably the best generic tamer for us to use. Yes, this could accidentally harm us uh, by us removing cards out of our security, but it's still just a good consistency tool on top of a memory fixer. Then uh, we do have Lusamon as a really cute card we could play just because we're filling up our trash a lot by having the availability to be able to have some alternative ways to recover in the deck and play a really cheap big body. Then uh, we also do have a rusher that we could play that's also part yellow. Then the main draw for utilizing yellow is going to be uh, the uh, brand new option uh, Heaven's Judgment for some really good DP reduction. And then we do have some uh, really interesting tech cards that are rewarding us for playing with yellow. So Darkness Wave is a good card to help us uh, try to turbo mill while adding some recyclability for us having yellow Digimon on the field. And then for some really interesting Shine Greymon support, we do have Analog Youth as a really good card to not only just help uh, dig through our deck and uh, fill up our trash, but to also to try to uh, gain advantage for when Shine Greymon Rune Mode ends up getting deleted, whether it's by our own card effects or the opponent's, by allowing us to be able to get some extra memory out of the card. And then uh, if we're looking at the recovery aspect of uh, Shine Greymon, we do have Ion Mako that we could use to try to make Digivolving into Shine Greymon a little bit cheaper. And when he gets uh, deleted, if we're able to uh, not pass the turn Digivolving into him, then uh, we could use the fact that we could rig a card on the top of our deck for when Shine Greymon Room Mode is going to recover. On top of the fact that it's still just helping us look for our evils, wizards, and demon lords, which is most of our level 3s and level 6s. Then if you do just want a, a level 7 Beelzemon to use, uh, so that way we could try to use some more Beelzemon based synergies, the starter deck Blast Mode is an absolutely fantastic card at allowing us to be super aggressive. And then as far as just some other good generic support tech, we have Matt as another way to reuse our purple Digimon and options as a good memory fixer. We do have uh, some rookie floodgates and other uh, tech cards that are interacting with options. Then we do have some other level 7s that are all really, really good, like Death Xmon, not only acting as an extra color for Heaven's Judgment if you're playing in the yellow side of things, but uh, also just a really good card to hard play in his own right, needing us to do basically nothing to be able to run him, and we do have lots of recyclability to be able to reuse him. And then we also have uh, Omnimon Sword Defeat as just another level 7 security Digimon, so we do have just a lot of potential security threats that the opponent would have to think about uh, when they're going to be aggressing into us based on what we could possibly be playing. Then we do just have some other really good generic options for us to run, and some cheap removal, we even have something like Deathclaw in case uh, one of the opponent's rookie floodgates is trying to wall us out from some of our plays. So that's all I really have for this video. As always, feel free to tell me your thoughts down in the comments below, and down in the description below are a couple of different ways you could support me and the channel. So I do have a, a TCG Player affiliate link, so when you use that link to buy cards off of TCG Player, then some of that money will go to supporting me and the channel. I also do make and sell playmats over on Overcard Gamers on Facebook, so when you buy a playmat with my design, then some of that money will also go to help supporting me and the channel. And on top of all of that, I do have a Twitch account over on twitch.tv slash Zenitsu, so giving me a follow and a subscription also helps support me there, and I do play Digimon on top of various other games on that platform as well. So thank you everyone for watching, and as always, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more content, and I'll see you in the next video.